Hey friends! Oh, it's cold outside. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge and uh, the center of the polar vortex. Those of you in Europe may not have heard about this thing, this phenomenon that we call polar vortex here in North America. It's when the cold air reaches way down and even gets down into the, uh, the deep south of the USA. Uh, sometimes re reaching into Mexico and stuff. Anyhow, it's cold outside. I'm not going to go on about it. I'm a Canadian. It gets cold outside. I used to live further north, quite a bit further north than I do now. Yeah, that's what it does here. What are we going to look at today? We're going to look at this. This is the O-Knife, made by Olight, the O-Knife Parrot. It's like a bit of a parrot beak, maybe certain parrots. Yeah, why not? It's a smaller liner lock knife. It's a front flipper or end flipper, whatever you want to call it. Uh, G10, you can get it in Micarta. It's got a uh, 154CM blade that comes just in two colors. This, this gray-blue G10 or a black, aka gray, Micarta. And uh, the Micarta version has a blackened blade. And I like a stonewash blade but I'd like a micarta handle scale, so my choice was to either buy two of these and make one that I liked, and uh, the other choice was just to get the one. So I got just the one. I bought these on a Boxing Week sale between Christmas and New Year's. Got a pretty good price. Uh, the price right now, is it too high for this knife? Well, you're gonna have to watch the video and find out. By the way, Andre M from Belgium, you're one of my Patreon supporters. You won the draw. I've tried to email you a couple times and I've sent you a message on Patreon. So check your spam folders on your email or check your Patreon messages because you won the draw last month and I'm not going to go into more details now. Uh, for the rest of my supporters, if Andre M doesn't contact me by the time the month is over, I'll choose two winners in February. And, uh, you know, just to keep everything fair for everybody, somebody's definitely going to get something. Anyhow, this is the O-Knife brand from Olight. Uh, they've got these pouches. It's sort of a... Uh, what's the name of this kind of material? Not sure. Anyways, a felt interior. It's like a super heavy-duty denim. It's a... whatever it is. You get the knife in there, and they've got a little pocket where they also give a unique little... Um, uh, coin for each knife. You see it's the same knife that this is on the coin, the parrot. So all of their knives come that way, uh, but we want to look at the parrot today. So what do we got? We've got a smaller knife, obviously. It's a short knife. It's a deeper knife this way in the hand. Uh, we've got, uh, like I said, 154cm blade, and that's what she looks like. Stonewash finish. I'm quite fond of a stonewash finish. Uh, they're calling this a modified sheep foot. Sure, modified sheep foot. That's a good enough name for this. Uh, comes down. We got a bit of a belly here. It's fairly thin at the edge. Uh, 154 cm steel listed right there. And then the O-Knife logo is there. I wish they would have made that logo a little smaller and put it up on the flat. Maybe move the 154 cm, put it all up in that spot. But hey, that's not terrible. At least not. it's not too huge. And on this side, we've got the name Parrot. Again, I wish that was up over here. And then it says Gauge, and then the uh, model, the number, KN08786. That's the badging that's on it. We, I don't know, should I call this a full flat grind? It's a higher grind than most knives are. That's, that's true, certainly short ones. But we got a flat section up here, makes it easy to index into you know a guided sharpening system. Uh, which is how I measure the grind angles. I clamp it up into a guided sharpening system and I use, you know, digital technology to tell me what the angle is that it was sharpened to. And uh, we'll go over all those details with all the measurements a little bit later on. Suffice it to say, thin edge sharpened fairly well. It cuts and slices quite well. The tip is very useful. Uh, you can pinch up. You can get a very sure index. That's the thing. If you've got a deeper handle... It just is very easy to know exactly where your edge of your blade is going to be. And it's got a bit of a forward choil right here with the blade. 
instead of, you know, a sharpener's choil. Of course, this also works as a sharpener's choil. Easy to sharpen right to the end without marring up the uh, rest of the, the knife there. 154 CM, it's a pretty good steel. It's, uh, you know, a decent steel that's out there these days, and I quite like it. And uh, we've got jimping, and the jimping goes, could go further. Of course, you always hear me say that, but when you've got your thumb right there, and this is probably the most common grip right here, maybe this sometimes, but this is the most common grip. You know, I've still got up to there, so up to where my fingernail is. So half of my thumb pad almost has jimping on it, and it's quite good. It's decent jimping. It's nice and fine, and yet it's got a deep enough uh, cut into it that it offers good grip. Everything's sort of rounded up off of there. Works really good for, you know, putting your thumb on it and flipping it over. And it should work really good for doing this. And uh, it doesn't. Now, there's a reason for that. Uh, the detent on this thing is a little bit stronger than it needs to be. And hopefully I can show, show you some close-up details about that later on. Uh, covering the rest of this sort of, uh, in a not quite a preview, but just sort of a, the overview at first. The handle shape, we've got a bit of a, you know, hump back here. Fits into the palm of the hand really well. And this shape right here, it's just very, you know, well fitting into the hand. We've got an open pillar construction. We've got those hourglass shaped uh, standoffs right there. We've got a right side only pocket clip. Of course, those are T6 flush screws. It's a chunky little pocket clip, but it works well. It's a decent, strong pocket clip, and I'll show you how that works in just a second. And we've got T8 screws. So there's a T8 body screw underneath there, T8 body screw, T8 body uh, pivot screw here. They are, you know, button screws that are recessed into the material, which I don't really like so much. This one's not all that recessed. Not like this one here. You know, it just creates a little um, trench in there where, you know, stuff can catch in there. I don't prefer it. It's not a big deal at all, though. It's not, it's not a big deal. I prefer flush screws like you saw on the previous knife that I reviewed. And I'll link it up here if you haven't seen it yet. It also didn't have a lanyard hole like this one. No lanyard hole on here at all. Lock up. No blade play, side to side, up and down. It's quite good. Lockup is very well done there. It's not too early. Lots of room to wear over. We've got a nice cutout here. We've got little uh, dimples put into you know the side of the lock release. Easy to get your thumb in there, push that rock lock release over, and close the knife. So you can do this sort of pinch and roll out if you want to. I think it'd be nice if they would have put a hole here so that you could flick it out with your finger. You know, they could have, I, I would have liked that. That would give you another alternative for opening it. But you can do that sort of slow roll. I'm using my middle finger and my thumb to get it started, and then just my thumb. And of course, like I showed before, the thumb going across the top here and then pulling it open. That works fine. And if the detent was better, about half the time I get it, and about half the time I just slide over it, and it just sort of irritates the tip of my finger a little bit because the detent is just a little too strong on this. I talked a little bit about how well it cuts. I'm happy with that. Um, how, how does it feel in hand if you're doing extended cutting? There's another, it's not a huge con, but it's a little bit of a con. If you're holding it for an extended period of time, it gets a little hot in the hand, especially in the right hand, but also in the left hand. And that's largely because of how thin this G10 is. And so we've got a thin edge all the way along here that you're gripping into, which means you're pushing that thin edge into your flesh, which means it gets a little uncomfortable. This side, it's a little bit wider, but even on this side, they didn't chamfer the edges. They didn't round or chamfer the edges of the G10. They went to the bother of making it 3D milled, so it's thicker down the middle and it gets goes thinner, but then they didn't soften up this edge. So it's like they went three quarters of the way and didn't go all the way to finishing this for really good comfort. And um, I really wish they would have. For the price range that this knife is in, at least at regular prices, I think they should have done those things. They should have, you know, 
rounded this edge a little bit, maybe made the handle scales a little bit thicker. Alignment, very good. I don't know if maybe my close up will show it better, but right down the middle, so that's a good thing. And uh, yeah, I already talked about how the lockup's good and strong and it slices and cuts quite well. Let's demonstrate the pocket clip now. Climbs over really well, goes to the full depth, holds on nicely, and that blue is very much the same blue as denim is. Of course, the uh, silver, the shiny metal, you know, it shows off a little bit, but hey, it hides in the pocket quite well. Before I take it apart, one last thing that I don't like about this knife. The open front. I just don't like these open front knives. I don't mind knives that have the lock pin or the stop pin on the uh, blade, so the pin moves with the blade. I just don't like it when it extends out past the end of the knife. I'd much rather have those liners, uh, this liner here, come all the way around and hide the entire hole or trench that that pin moves in and just helps keep junk from getting in there. Now, does it happen a lot? No, it doesn't happen an awful lot, but it just seems to me that it'd be better if it was closed and I like the aesthetic of it better because I look at my entire knife as a whole thing. I don't, you know, look at it just from this angle. And in a photograph, that looks quite good. But I want the whole thing to look good, and that just looks ugly to me. And, you know, I think it just is asking for junk to get in there a little bit. So there's that. Uh, now let's take the thing apart. Let's uh, take a looky-loo about that. So that screw is coming out pretty easily. Now I've not taken this apart before because I bought it from uh, Olight or olightstore.ca. Anyways, the Canadian Olight store. So it was shipped from a Canadian store. Yeah, that's that's not deep enough. If that screw was tight, I could have easily stripped out or damaged the head of that screw. I don't want to take the pocket clip off to get at that screw, so I'll do it from this side. Now, I don't like doing that. I'd rather just take off all the screws from the same side um, instead of going from two different sides. But hey, that's how the cookie crumbles sometimes. Hopefully it'll come apart okay. It's coming loose. Um, don't like doing this. Just give it a little pop. There we go. So yeah, so the standoff screwed in one side and on the other side. And hey, we've got double row ceramic ball bearings, which I very much like. So that's a good thing uh, in you know a nylon cage, which is fine. But double row, the inside row itself has what eight ball bearings, and the outside row has two, four, six, eight as well. Of course, between each one, so sixteen ball bearings on each side. So that's quite nice. And uh, here's what I was talking about before, just a moment ago. I want this metal to come all the way around here. And so then that trench is fully enclosed. Skeletonizing here, skeletonizing down there. Oh, I forgot to show the balance point again, didn't I? Uh, we've got a D-shaped pin here. So we've probably got a D-shaped hole here. There we go, D-shaped hole there. And yeah, these feel fairly dry, like they didn't put much lubrication in there at all. Yeah. That's why it was not, uh, that's why it was squeaking a little bit, I think. Yeah. They didn't put much at all for lubrication in there. So I'm gonna lube, lube it up. What's the price of this thing? The sale price was good. This knife's been around for about a year. And right now the regular price in the United States is 49, 79, 74, $74.95 for the G10 version and $79.95 US for the Micarta. In Canada, it's $99.95 and $107.95 for the Micarta version. Once you factor in the exchange rate, the prices are almost identical. So definitely if you're in Canada, you're not gonna save money buying this somewhere else. Uh, they got Olight DE, Olight FR, I think they've got a UK store measurements. The weight of this knife, 101 grams, 3.56 ounces, 
factory sharpness, I got a score after I averaged out the, my tests, about 180 best. So not a great score, but not a bad score for how sharp it came from the factory. The cutting edge length is 61 and a half millimeters, 2.42 inches. Blade length tipped to the closest spot on the G10, 67.0 millimeters, 2.64 inches. The thickness of the blade stock, 2.77 millimeters, uh, 0 0.109, so just over a tenth of an inch thick. Blade depth, the widest points right about here, 35.2 millimeters, 1.38 inches. How thick is it right at the edge? Just off of the main bevel, where the main bevel ends and the sharpening bevel, the apex bevel is, that's 0 0.41 millimeters, 16 thousandths of an inch on average, so that's quite good. The grind angle's not bad. This side's got 20.7, and it's very close all the way along, except for they did sharpen the heel of the blade here just a little bit more, but basically 20.7 degrees. This side's got an average of 17.4 degrees, from 18 degrees to 16.8 degrees. Uh, this side just did consistent. So this is 1.2 degrees change. That's better than most knives as far as consistency with the uh, grind angles. The uh, handle now, the handle length, uh, not counting the uh, flipper extension, just the handle material or liners, 91.7 millimeters, 3.61 inches. The grip area, and I'm counting this part here, the forward choil and sort of middle of that rounded off section. It's a little bit under 90 millimeters, right around three and a half inches for grip. And that works just fine. Like my hands are just barely extra large and I've got a full handed grip on this knife. The um, thickness of the handle scales, right in the middle it's the thickest. 11.9 millimeters, 0.468 of an inch. So that's a fair bit under a half an inch. So I think they could have went with half an inch and made this G10 a bit thicker here. Uh, the handle depth, that's this measurement, 35.3 millimeters, 1.39 inches. And when the knife is closed, going into your pocket, it needs 40.2 millimeters, which is 1.58 inches. And the total length of this guy is right around 159 millimeters, 6.26 inches. What do I think of it? It's overpriced. It really is. Uh, if you get it on one of their sales, you know, then it could be worth it. There's just too many little things and they just sort of add up a little bit on my not valuing this at a hundred Canadian dollars or what is it? 75 US dollars. The steel's nothing special these days. You know, it's a good steel. It's certainly not garbage at all. It's, it's a good steel, but it's not special enough for that price. Um, and just the little things of the detent not being dialed in, the fact that there's a little burr on that edge, they just didn't quality control check stuff very well. They didn't round off these little edges, which they easily could have done to make it a little more comfortable in hand. Um, those are the main things. Um, most people would like a lanyard hole and the blade edge, you know, comes along here. So there's loads of room for a lanyard hole there. Oh, I didn't do the balance point at all, did I? I told you I was going to, but I never did. It's right there, which not bad, not bad. Um, it's a decent knife. Don't like that it opened the front. I already said that before. So if you like, if you don't think that the, the, the things that I call minor cons are, are a problem for you, because we all have our own tastes and likes and dislikes, right? then, hey, yeah, go for it. There's nothing super wrong with this knife. There's nothing big that's inherently bad about it. A few more color variations would have been nice, like a different micarta with a stonewash finish. I would have preferred that, but it's not a deal breaker at all. So there you go. Thank you once again to my financial supporters. Yes, I am working on a knife sale this month, so uh, some of the knives, and I always have my supporters get first chance at the sales. Uh, they get 48 hours, two days access to the sale. And then whatever isn't sold, I post a public video and uh, let people, anybody who watches the channel, you know, buy knives for me. I'll post that within the next two weeks, maybe closer to sooner than the two weeks, but it might be two weeks, who knows. But just hit that subscribe button, hit that bell button so you'll be notified when that video comes up. 
If you are a supporter, I will also post it on uh, the Patreon and I'll send a message through the YouTube messaging uh, feature uh, for the members to see when that sale starts so that you'll have access to all those things. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Let me know what you think. And remember, friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.